Hello friends, welcome to Creator King. Lately we've had some pretty heavy work days and our backs have been getting sore, so I thought it was only fair to create an invention for all those poor souls who work from dusk till dawn like me. To achieve our goal, start by applying instant glue to one end of the wooden stick and attach a toy motor to it. The pile of instant glue we used won't be enough, so get one of these plastic ties and put it around the small motor right in the middle like a seatbelt. Once well secured, cut off the extra and get a square 9 volt battery like this one from Amazon. Apply instant glue to the popsicle sticks right in front of the motor and glue the battery horizontally. Also, get our usual switch which will fuse to the side of the battery with some more of our super glue. Connect the snap-on cables to the battery and then use it to connect all three components to each other. First, attach the black wire from the snap to one of the motor pins while the red wire will go to the switch. Get a small extra piece of coated wire which we'll use to connect the switch to the last pin on the motor and finish by soldering them together. As we are quite cautious here, let's use pieces of duct tape to cover all the connections between the wires. Test that this well-known electrical circuit works correctly before getting a bottle of water and removing its cap. Multiply this cap by two and create a few holes with the help of a soldering iron. In the meantime, tell me what your New Year's resolutions are. Mine is always to lose weight. I never make it though. Greasy food is just too delicious. Insert the caps into the motor pivots through the hole in the center and secure them by applying plenty of instant glue. Once we have this step ready, the next thing to do will be to get some thick galvanized wire. Cut a good piece with our small circular saw. You can also cut it with a simple pair of cutting pliers. The saw is not necessary, but it will make the process easier, as well as look more professional. When I was in college, we used a so-called jigsaw. For those inexperienced in the subject, it's a type of saw that uses long serrated metal blades that go up and down to cut wood. The point is that I took apart the one at my school for another project. After inserting the two pieces of wire through the side holes in the caps and securing them with plenty of instant glue, let's look for a red pen like the ones your elementary school teacher used to make you title your notes with and remove the ink tank. With the help of our friend, the saw, cut the opening of the pen, leaving us with just this little plastic tube. Glue the tube on the toy machine and with tweezers, bend the ends of the metal rods into an S shape as you can see on the screen. Get one of these strange drill stands that I've never seen before in my life that help you drill holes more precisely. These tools are getting weirder and weirder. Pulling the lever downwards will allow us to pierce the wooden stick perfectly. Once we've drilled the hole in the stick, find another stick that fits through the hole easily. Rather thin for my taste, but there are those who like it that way. Right, Julio? With cutting pliers, separate a small piece and insert it through the hole of the first stick until it's positioned right in the center. Apply some super glue at the intersection of the wooden sticks and insert the cross-shaped piece through the body of the pin we glued down a few moments ago. We'll also need a little ball from that exciting Olympic sport where people compete with all their might at impossible speeds. Make a hole in this little ball with our drill and the appropriate drill bit to insert the wooden section protruding from the structure. Find a couple of normal rubber bands and place them on the inside of the twist caps. Then attach them to the plastic surface of the pin tube with some instant glue. To be able to delight our muscles with this homemade massager, we will first have to remove the support of a giant syringe. Glue the syringe tabs to the stick right below the battery. Slice off the excess popsicle stick with the help of your mini circular saw and smooth the edge to avoid chipping when we use it. With this, we will be ready to enjoy a rich massage after a whole day working under the sun with tons of stress and no desire to live. Oh yes, I can already feel my muscles relaxing little by little. The following invention reminds me a lot of my childhood and was one of the reasons I wanted to become a crazy inventor surgeon professor when I was a child. I got to become almost everything except the surgeon. 
After measuring the cardboard box, write the measurements on it with a permanent marker. On Google, search for images of the game operation and select one that is good quality. Save the image you want and open Photoshop. To adjust the size of the image, change the units to centimeters and then put the measurements that we took at the beginning. Cut out the picture of our future patient with a pair of scissors. Poor thing, he doesn't know what awaits him. Apply your glue stick to the entire back of the image and stick it on the side of the box. Once we are sure that nothing in this world will unstick it, proceed to create the holes on our patient with the scalpel. I once thought of studying medicine, but I regretted it. I can bear to see my own blood or intestines, but seeing other people's makes me go into a state of extreme stress and anxiety. Plus, doctors hardly sleep. I really value my sleep. Once you take out every last one of his bones and you can see inside, begin to create your patient's nervous system. With this, he will feel it every time we touch him, and it'll hurt a lot. Place the pieces of galvanized wire that will act as a touch sensor around each hole, bending it with pliers to the needed shape. Leave a small section at the end that we will cut to size and insert through a previously created hole. Instant glue the sensors to the box. While I continue gluing these pieces of metal, tell me what Santa brought you for Christmas. I got a nice watch, lots and lots of socks, since the ones I had were full of holes, boots to make me look cool, and tools to create inventions. Even though I wanted a Nintendo Switch, but well, thanks to the big belly for the gifts. Now that you've installed every last one of the sensors and secured them on the inside with a good amount of hot glue, let's proceed to create the electrical system that will detect your errors. Connect each of the sensors together with some coated copper wire to form a circuit. This small horn will be in charge of warning us with its annoying sound that we are doing the operation wrong and that the patient may possibly feel the aftermath thanks to our incompetence as surgeons. With the circuit ready, take a pair of popsicle sticks and a wooden clothespin. Apply glue to both sides and attach the popsicle sticks to them. With this, we will have our semi-automatic chopsticks almost ready. But first, draw some triangles at the end with a pencil so you know where to cut, leaving our little tweezers sharp enough to poke your eye out. Take some aluminum foil from the kitchen and cut a couple of pieces, which we'll wrap around the tips of our tweezers, sealing them with glue and sticking a wire in them to react to touching the sensors. Connect the cable from the tweezers to the alarm and with our scalpel, make a series of holes in one of the sides of the box. These will serve as the sound output of our toy. Apply glue to the top of the alarm and glue it into the box. Create an extra hole on one side where the tweezer wire will pass through. Connect the 9-volt battery that we always need to the snap of the electrical circuit and stick it on the side opposite the alarm. Get a thin piece of cardboard from which you will cut out squares and rectangles of different sizes to glue them inside the box and cover the holes for our patient. With a skewer stick, replace the different bones by measuring and cutting the pieces to the exact size. I hope he can live with wooden bones. For the ribs, glue several pieces of sticks together simulating their shape. Put our pork ribs in place and we'll be ready to be a worthy surgeon, straight out of that popular show, Grey's Anatomy. The operation is going excellent! Oh heavens, I think I broke his femur. I hope he doesn't notice and sue me for medical malpractice. Let's continue with the operation. Two more little bones and he'll be completely boneless. Once you're done playing with your patient's life, you can collect all his bones and store them inside the box along with your surgical forceps to keep everything tidy. Let's move on to the last of the invention. Uh, yeah. Kevin? Can you stop making all that noise? Thanks. The last of our inventions will be a toy that surely many people want. And it's not this green car as such, but it's similar. To begin with, we have to dismantle the car by removing the screw to open the cover and access these beautiful wheels. We'll also need the rear tires, which are attached to this complex system of gears that we'll also need to disassemble. Remove one of the wheels first in order to be able to extract each component one by one until we are left with only this pair of wheel sets. Leave them here for a moment while we create what will be the base of our cardboard car. Use a ruler to measure the part to be cut, which will be 10 by 4 centimeters. Then cut it with the help of our sharp box cutter. 
You know, when I was a kid, I had a truck that was shaped like a ball. And when you were going to cross difficult terrain, it would transform itself by opening its shell to get a better grip on the surface. Place the sets of wheels on the piece of cardboard we just cut to measure and mark the space where the wheels will go. With a pair of scissors, cut the grooves we marked. Then insert the stick holding the wheels together into a small tube that used to be a Q-tip. We will do something similar with the second pair of wheels. Divide the plastic tube in half to be able to insert it on both sides and close the whole piece again. Take the piece of cardboard again and mark three more grooves which we'll also cut out. Apply instant glue to each of the tabs and attach both pairs of wheels. Once we have the base ready with its wheels, look for a couple of hair ties of different colors which we will put on the bars, placing them right in the center. A box of toothpicks appears with a Harry Potter-like snap. Pull out a pair of them and cut the tips of one end. Apply instant glue to each one, then attach them to the base of our future truck to give more support to the structure. Remove the cap from the water bottle and apply instant glue all over the edge to attach it to the main structure on top of the toothpicks. It reminds me of those lawnmowers from the famous Plants vs. Zombies game. Get a toy motor and a 3D printed piece which we will glue on top of the cap and attach the rubber bands to the pivots. Uh oh, I think a police officer stopped us. Hello officer, what's the problem? What do you mean by a routine checkup? You can't do that. After opening up the policeman's car, dismantle its interior to take or borrow its electrical system, making connections here and soldering there. You know, don't you? You'll also need one of these packaged batteries that come with several rechargeable devices. Connect it to the red and blue wires. Compact all the components as much as possible and proceed to quickly create the body of our truck using popsicle sticks. Beautiful, isn't it? It even has a little flag. You can make any body work you like, like a Ferrari. In addition, it has little lights so that you don't crash at night. What do you say? Shall we go for a ride? Look at how beautiful it looks. So small and fast. It's up to par with the best Jeeps on the market. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.